How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern, Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and it is Wednesday here on the show, and you know what that means? we got a lot to talk about here today. Tonight is the five-year anniversary show of AEW Dynamite. Five years they have been on the air, and they got a big show tonight. We're going to run down the lineup here in a bit. Tony Khan is promising there's going to be an announcement and a significant overrun. So we're going to tell you all about that, what we expect to happen on the show tonight. The Brian Danielson Okada match with uh, the stipulations they have added, and plenty more. Also, we have got the debut of NXT on the CW on Tuesday night. And I do know that from talking to people there, uh, there was some disappointment about the show. And that was mostly built around the fact that they had to rush. They had to rush the last portion of that show because NXT on CW, it's a broadcast network. And my presumption is that a lot, a lot of the uh, local affiliates have got news coming on at 10 o'clock, so it's very much like SmackDown was back on Fox. I don't think they can have an overrun anymore. And so they've got to be off the air at the top of the hour. And, man, they were rushing, rushing to get off the air and get everything in. So we're going to tell you about that show. I liked it. And uh, the best part of the show? Graphics. And a lot of them. So we'll tell you about that, as well as Bad Blood coming up this Sunday on the WWE Network. We've got a lot of news as well. CM Punk gave away a bunch of food yesterday. This guy likes to give away food. I'll tell you about that. Shawn Michaels can see him running NXT one day. I'm sure CM Punk can as well. And uh, plenty more. Back in a moment, Wrestling Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. And hey, it's a free show here today. That's right. Really? really? Yeah, it's going to be free everywhere. YouTube and Spotify, Apple Podcasts, the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. Because we had a lot to talk about. Things are changing. Mm. NXT moving to the CW, and it's a five-year anniversary of Dynamite tonight. Very, very likely they're going to announce that television deal. I'm still that's, celebrating two-hour Raws. That's the rumor. That's right, two-hour Raws for the time being. Although, you know, as we'll talk about here in a while, whether you see this as a positive or a negative is up to you. But, brother, 2025? I don't know, man. Four-hour Raws. No. It's probably going to be three hours of raw on netflix or at least like a three-hour block they can go however long they want it doesn't matter but the thing that people have to realize is you know they have a lot of people that want to sponsor them there's going to be commercials so if you have enough people that want to sponsor you to fill three hours i mean you ain't gonna just do two hours for fun and lock out these advertisers so my guess is that raw netflix is going to be probably close to a three-hour show every week there are discussions and negotiations regarding moving SmackDown to three hours. Uh, so we would have three <laughs> hours of Raw, three hours of SmackDown, two hours of NXT, and then it is very likely that we are not going to have Rampage anymore. Rampage is likely going the way of the Dodo. But we would have two hours of Dynamite, two hours of Collision, and then... As Dave noted in an article for subscribers on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, you know, when Swerve was talking about Fox, well, it wasn't just Swerve talking about Fox. It's not, there's no deal signed, okay? But they are actually negotiating with Fox. Now, obviously, it could be FS1. It could be another Fox property. But I can tell you something 100%. If they get on Fox, that's got to be an A show, a two-hour A show. And so we may end up with three hours of Raw, three hours of SmackDown, two hours of NXT, two hours of Dynamite, two hours of Collision, and two hours of Afterburn or whatever it's called. You guys ready for that? What's it called? 
jacked. What did, no, no, what did they trademark again? They trademarked something. I already forgot. Pete? No, it was AEW uh, something or other. Shock, yeah, shock, shockwave. Shockwave? Okay, yes, yeah. Yes, pr- Pride Shockwave. Yeah, so six hours of main roster AEW and six hours of main roster WWE. No moss. Eight, no moss. Eight if you count uh, NXT. Every oh. single PLEs week. every month from both companies. Another yeah. three hours. A tidy three hours in the case of WWE. A sloppy six and a half hours with the the, the pre-show and whatnot when it comes to AEW. But it's a lot of programming. And WWE can pull it off right now. Now I'll say this about NXT on the CW. And we'll get to it later on. You can see why NXT is developmental during that show and why they're filled with not ready for primetime players. Not to say that the show on CW can't be successful because I believe it's going to be CW's most successful show. But it's not at the level of Raw or SmackDown and it's not going to be. With AEW, man, it's great to have that money and it's great to have the opportunity to be with Fox and to open up that relationship. And I don't blame them at all for doing any of that. But as a fan watching at home who watches two of their shows every single week, sometimes three of them, if I get a chance to watch Rampage, boy, I don't know how I feel right now about them being able to launch a new show. They can launch it and they may have some success at first, but I worry long term because we see the malaise that they've been in for a while and i'm not convinced they're gonna break out just yet but then again i guess you can't turn that down that type of money for another show which let's be honest we don't need we don't need it from either one of these channels or either one of these promotions we don't need as much tv as we're getting So tonight on the five-year anniversary show, we do in fact have uh, Brian Danielson versus Kazuchika Okada with both titles on the line, although the Continental title is only on the line for the first 20 minutes, which means for the first 20 minutes, nobody can interfere or they will be fired. Got it? It's funny because MGF did a tweet yesterday, which actually was before we did this show. Did he do it while standing in craft services for uh, Happy he, Gilmore? He might have been. He's, he's Happy Gilmore Jr. <laughs> so good for him. He said, guys, I had to stop what I was doing to read this graphic. After reading it repeatedly for a full eight hours, I've come to the conclusion, no human being can possibly comprehend this situation. It's impossible. Please help. And then he wrote, this post definitely wasn't sarcastic. I never know what to make of this guy. Oh, old shooting Max. Because I definitely, I mean, listen, it's not like it's hard to figure out, but there is plenty that they <laughs> don't tell you. Wait a second, we did a whole segment on you trying to put everything together. Well, I yesterday. figured it out, but I still have a lot of questions. It's not like I don't understand what they're advertising. I don't understand why they're doing it. Or I don't understand why it needs to be it. so complicated. <laughs> I don't understand why in storyline it's occurring or why in storyline this Tony Khan's such a maniac. But that's that's the match, so we got that one. And then we have got Will Ospreay versus Ricochet for the international title. The title is on the line. We got Dr. Britt Baker's return versus Serena Deeb. And this, of course, is in Britt's hometown, so I don't have high hopes for Serena Deeb. Hangman Page will also be facing Juice Robinson. And I could be wrong. I could be wrong, okay? But I don't think anything else has been announced yet. So, chat, has anything else been announced aside from these four matches? And it's important. And I'm not just asking this to find out why they haven't announced more matches yet. Have they announced anything else? It's looking like no. Mm. Okay, well, here's the reason I bring that up. Because there was a show a few months ago, and they only announced, like, a few things. And it was, like, the day of the show, and they usually announce more. But that was the night that MGF and Will Ospreay went an hour. And so the fact that, I'm not saying they're going to go an hour because I don't know, but I do know that they only have four things announced for the five-year anniversary show. And that to me suggests that Danielson Okada is either going to a one-hour draw or they're going to make you think they are, but it ends at like the 57-minute mark or something. I think that match is going long. But I guess we'll find out. They could announce something during this show, which they've done in the past. So we shall see. But that's tonight. 
five Juice year anniversary. Robinson steals every show that he's on. Certainly every segment that he's in, he did last week. Then you had the interview with him, uh, which, by the way, was never really explained why they were tending to Jeff Jarrett so nicely in the ring after whipping him so dastardly outside of it as the rest of Jarrett's crew just sat around, like, waiting, uh, you know. But if this is going to lead to Hangman and Jay White, I'm all for it. But hopefully Juice is just a more than a stepping stone in all of this because he's one of the more entertaining characters that they have. And much like Mark Briscoe, who... Uh, okay, fine. He's in the deal with the conglomeration right now and mixing it up with Jericho and the Learning Tree. I guess that's good. I would rather use him in a different way. That would be better. I hope they do the same thing with Juice Robinson and just don't set him to the side now that Jay White's coming back. In fact, Jay White and Juice Robinson have proven to be a pretty great team. I'd like to see him go back to that. I cannot help but notice that not only do they have four matches only, but Tony Khan also tweeted there would be a significant overrun. Why do we need a significant overrun with four matches announced? Because people love you and Dave. Because they're going it. to 60-minute draw is why. Oh, oh, okay. Yes. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sembravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Want to mention if you're listening on for free... We got a lot of options to hear a lot more shows. I was doing some math the other day. I wasn't doing math, but I was counting. And uh, we got like 14,000 shows in the archives. Every show we have ever done dating back to 2005. So if you like this show and you want to go back and listen to every show from everybody that we've ever done, Observer Live and the Brian and Vinny Show and Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave Meltzer, you can subscribe to our main site, WrestlingObserver.com. It's fourteen ninety nine a month. You get everything, and you get all of the new observers every week, which is like forty thousand words on pro wrestling. And there's thousands of archives. Pretty much every issue, with I think a couple of exceptions from like two thousand seven or so, like every single one from nineteen ninety one through today weekly, is available in the archives for subscribers at wrestlingobserver dot com. And if you only want the podcasts, if you only want to hear all of the shows. And we do, it's like 20-something shows a week, some crazy number. It's like 80 shows a month you get as a audio subscriber. The subscribers are available on Apple Podcasts, as well as Spotify, as well as YouTube. YouTube, you can even watch them, because they're on YouTube. And Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube, all just $9.99 a month. So if you're looking to save some money off the main site, you don't want the observers, you just want the podcast delivered to your phone, check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. How do you find us? Just put it in. F4WOnline.com slash Apple. We'll take you to Apple Podcasts. F4WOnline.com slash Apple. F4WOnline.com slash Spotify. We'll take you to Spotify. At 4wonline.com slash Spotify. And you want to guess about YouTube? What's that? Video.f4w... No, I'm just kidding. F4wonline.com slash YouTube. So there you go. Check them out, everybody. Lots of shows to listen to. Commutes. Your commute sucks? Listen to some audio. Your workout? Your workout sucks? Work out and listen to the audio. But don't listen to the granny show when you're weightlifting. You will have a problem. Even even if things are good in your life and you actually enjoy the things that you're doing, listen to F4WOnline.com audio. Exactly. All right, uh, a couple of notes here. We'll talk about NXT here in a while. Well, Mr. McMahon ended up being one of Netflix's top-watched shows last week. Despite only being available on the service in September 25th, it was the fourth most-watched show on the service globally all over the world. September 23rd through 29. 4.9 million times during that period. 28.2 million total hours streamed. A Lyle and Eric Menendez story. By the way, that's how we're going to be reading 19 Raw million in January. 19 million views and 153.8 million. It'll be interesting to see how many people watch Raw on Netflix if they release these numbers. 4.9 million views of that McMahon documentary. That's a lot. And Over two and three, does it list that? 
Well, I told you number one. Yeah, the Menendez brothers. Everybody knows that one right now. What are what are two and three? Well, McMahon was third. Okay, so, it was two. I don't know. But anyway, uh, a lot of people watched it. And, you know, this Peacock deal, man, God, this is WWE. It, they, is it time to sunset it? No, are you kidding me? Right. Do you know how much money WWE got from Peacock? Oh, yeah. Like, they got so much money, significantly more than this network was worth. But Peacock wanted to grow their viewership, and yeah. so they paid them a preposterous amount of money. And WWE on Peacock, like, there are so many people watching these PLEs now, more than ever before. Like, when they talk about WrestleMania, you know, the most watched WrestleManias, they're all the most watched, the most watched everything, because they're on Peacock right now. So they made out like bandits. Is well, the way it used to be termed. It's amazing. NBC, obviously they had the Olympics, but two of their most successful things on Peacock, they have farmed you know, from somebody else. It's WWE and the network, and it's Reels, which gives them On Patrol Live every Friday and Saturday. Now, I believe it's a dumpster fire for every other portion of the day, but those two things are very impactful, and I believe they draw a lot of people over to Peacock. What's also interesting is that even though everything else is locked up right now, what 2025 does bring, if I'm not mistaken, is the Peacock deal ending. And do you want to go ahead and move the library somewhere else? Does Netflix want it? Is that eventually where it's going to migrate to is that a unsaid agreement brother i don't care as long as i get that deal? stupid library back they stopped uploading stuff well trying to find new stuff to watch and it's like you ever try to go back and watch mid-south yeah it's like i forget no, we, no we, not not me brian we were looking at well <laughs> you aren't watching enough of it because i mean it oh doesn't believe even, me i was it's it, just there weren't enough me's exactly it doesn't even start until like season seven or something like that look, look which has Atlantic. four episodes well and then it's like where is all this stuff <laughs> well here the bottom line of what i was getting to though is look that's going to be up for grabs and there i can't remember how much peacock and nbc paid for it but they still have a, a big interest in wwe because of their usa stuff do they want to lose the ple's Will they bid up with Netflix? Will Netflix care about that aspect? Will somebody else get involved? So they still have that aspect of their business to, to cover and to sell off to somebody. Look, ESPN's got all UFC stuff. Would they be interested in having WWE stuff? You know, again, it's going to be an interesting fact of the year or part of the year is going to be them selling those off. Hey, this guy here goes, have you tried WWE Vault on YouTube? They're uploading old shows there. They're uploading new classic content to well, YouTube, but yes. not to Peacock? Well, here's yeah, well, here's the thing. They started this WWE Vault, and a lot of it is old skits and moments and vignettes and just single individual matches. But on Sunday, what they did was they debuted a show that they uncovered from the Omni. It doesn't have the Ric Flair, Barry Windham main event on it, but it's got the rest of the show, and they uploaded that. Oh, yeah, they do that. They do stuff that's, like, topical. I mean, they did. They put up some Dump Matsumoto matches yeah, after but there that was, documentary went yes, out. Yes, they did do that, but there was nothing really topical about this Omni show from, like, I can't remember when it was. It was, like, June of 87, and... Again, for whatever reason, they decided to go ahead and put that up there. The person says, yes, yeah, so the 1998 Hell in a Cell is on there uncut. What was originally cut? I don't know. 1998 Hell in a Cell? Did they hang Bossman? No, that was after. That was, that was WrestleMania or something. What was that? Well, once you look it up while I keep going here. CM mm. Punk is giving away more food. <laughs> That's how this story begins. WrestlingObserver.com. <laughs> CM Punk is giving away more food. He's a food giver. After cameras stopped rolling following Tuesday's NXT in Chicago, Punk was celebrating in the ring with new NXT champion Trick Williams. Punk told people that on the way out, they could pick up a box of pizza on behalf of both himself and Williams. Who do you think chipped in more? Social media. Punk. <laughs> fans shared photos and videos of people. I wonder if Trick Williams knew about that. People <laughs> distributing boxes of Lou Malnati's pizza. Lou Malnati's. As they were making their way out of the Allstate Arena. Maybe Lou Malnati is the guy that donated all that pizza for. You uh, think that there may be a tie in there somehow with yeah. something? 
He gifted fans free ice cream when he came back in 2021 yeah. and at Rampage. Well, didn't he also give some of his favorite reporters? Was it Na- Nando's or whatever it is from? Oprah I don't. Th- I don't think that was his favorite reporters. I think that oh, was uh, other wrestlers. Okay. Yes, I don't think he had any favorite reporters the day that he gave away Nando's. I think he did, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Wasn't it the Houseman dude? I don't know. Could be wrong. Know. Sorry if I slandered you. Mankind versus Undertaker. So, why? What was cut about? Yeah, this what was story? cut? I mean, what do you mean uncut? Uh, like I remember watching that paper. I don't remember anything cut. So, I, I know, oh, I know oh, the oh, match go. is famous. I know the match you're talking about, but what he said it was up there uncut. So I want to know what was originally cut and where. Here's here's what it may be was there was a lot of dead time. I like, see. No, no, no. He explains is that, it. What is it? So apparently, what they put up before. They had a black and white filter for all the blood, which is ridiculous. But they've gotten rid of the black and white filter. And he says the vault's also been uploading full WCW Saturday night shows. Huh. Really? No, we're not switching wait, to that. Wait, what era, though, of that? Hopefully the very end. Oh, God. They were terrible. Oh, Shawn Michaels could absolutely see CM Punk running a WWE NXT one day if Punk is, if Punk is interested in the job, it says. You kidding me? This guy killed for that job. It says uh, he sees Punk as a natural successor to his role, leading NXT at some point in the future. He voiced his support for Punk. He said he would do anything he can to help him. (laughs) That's what his heart is into, absolutely, Sean said. Whether it's CM Punk or anyone else has a passion for it, look, I absolutely would understand it because it happened to me. This place is infectious. The environment here in NXT at the Performance Center down here in Orlando is unlike any other culture in the entire business. That's why everybody does come around here, because it takes them back to the beginning when this business was about the making it, the being in the ring, the excitement in the future, and the graphics. (laughs) Oh, man, and hopefully it'll be a lot better for uh, CM Punk teaching kids than it was for people trying to teach CM Punk things. Because I, I know what, he got into it with Tony Atlas, pointed him out, and apparently hated him, and Dr. Death Steve Williams may have been another one. That may have been Cole Cabana, so not, it was not fun times for them in OVW. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. The show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Before we get into NXT, you should mention that the Raw show on Monday, the final three-hour Raw, at least through the end of this year, Maybe the final ever on cable television. Please. 1.52 million viewers, 0. 0.48 and 18 to 49, which is very good, going up against two strong NFL games. Well. Well, two NFL games. <laughs> Seattle versus Detroit and Miami versus Tennessee. But, I mean, 15 million viewers for the Seattle game, seven or 6 million for the uh, Miami game. But uh, the point here is not only did the show do well, which I attribute fully to the Battle of the Monsters. What'd they call it? Battle of the Monsters. Is that what they called it? Uh, Last Monster Standing. There we go. Monster Mash. Numbskull. They should have done a Monster Mash. But uh, that held up well. 1.43 million. Didn't drop much from the second hour. But the key here is that now that the show is cutting that third hour, the third hour is almost always, and anytime you have a third hour show, like one of the hours is going to be the least rated. And so when you cut it, the overall number for Raw is going to go up. Had there not been a third hour, uh, this would have done 1.6 million as opposed to 1.5 million. So it doesn't matter. They've signed their new TV deal. It's irrelevant. But you are going to see the numbers up slightly uh, with one fewer hour. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think that the third hour is going to be such an albatross that you can actually build up a two-hour Raw and make people all jacked up about it and actually build that into a much bigger winner before you bail off of USA and go over to Netflix? I wonder what the number can be by the end of this whole thing. We'll find out. But I know the hourly number will be three hours, probably, starting on Netflix. Uh, It pains me. I know. But they will still have have commercials, which I can skip through, so I'm all right. Well, and I guess that, you know, and look, more than ever, more than ever, because of the people that are there doing the production and the people that own them, 
it's a sport in some ways to them and how they produce it and how they are packaging it and delivering it to you. It's more sport than ever in some ways. The NFL is one hour worth of action and it's a three hour broadcast. So I get why they do it, but oh my God, it's like the idea of what happens if collision went to three hours and rampage disappeared. And that's the tact that they would take. It just, it's death. And I understand it from a business point of view, but from a fan point of view, it's tough. And Brandon Thurston put up a chart not all that long ago of, you know, the ebbs and flows since way back before the Attitude Era, you know, from the time Raw started as to what the numbers would be and how they have gone over the years. And when the three hours began, you could see a precipitous decline. That was one of the obvious ones you could see was when that happened. So, yes, things are great right now. Things have changed. But to me, you can still do less and get a lot more out of it. Let me talk about NXT. Let's go. All right, listen, I like this show a lot. I saw huge improvements. I saw good wrestling. I know there were people there that were unhappy with the show, largely because the last 20, 25 minutes was drastically rushed. They didn't have to hear because on commentary. Literally. They are, uh, you know, they're on network television now. And so I presume at 10 o'clock, a lot of local stations go to news. And so you can't have an overrun. Well, it's not that just bloke that there doing weather he ain't waiting. No, it's syndicated TV more than anything with the CW. Whatever. Uh, Seinfeld numbers, things like that, that money is way more important to them than anything they put on I think on they got network. some local newscasts, because I'm pretty sure one came no, on after the show for me. They they do, but newscasts don't make money. What makes I know, but the are... point is, the newscasts are live, okay? Yes. And it doesn't matter whether they make money or not. The weatherman ain't waiting around for I know, Trick Williams to win the title. dope. I'm giving you another reason as to why they need to be I don't want another it's reason. Just... I'm telling you why. Yeah, that's like not this the for only SmackDown. Why. It's exactly <laughs> like ahead. this for SmackDown too. I All these it, local nerd. numbers, the news, it's just how it is. But Let's the point go. is Let's there's go. no overrun. So this show has to end on time. And as a result of that, if you watch like the end of the main event, it was like totally weird. It came totally out of nowhere. It's Trick Williams' big championship win. And he like avoided a charge and hit his move and won. And then they start shooting off all the pyro and everything. And CM Punk's supposed to give Ethan Page the uh, GTS. But, like, there's confetti everywhere. You can't see a thing. <laughs> but they got, like, 10 seconds before they go off the air. So you just see this blur of CM Punk trying to give this guy a GTS. And that was, like, the end of the show. They just rush off the air because there's a hard out now. And they had a lot they wanted to do. And because of that, the main event. And, you know, if I had one criticism for the main event, aside from it being rushed, is they had CM Punk there for obvious reasons. It's Chicago. You want to do a big number. And that's all fine and good. But, like, this is supposed to be Trick's big night. He wins the title back from Ethan Page. And this match was all about CM Punk as referee. It was CM Punk doesn't like this. CM Punk doesn't like that. CM Punk gets in the way of this. CM Punk gets in the way of that. It's like the CM Punk show. And I wanted Trick to, like, get his moment. And he kind of did. But then they rushed off the air. Because they're a damn weatherman. At least he gave everyone pizza. Well, they watch the weather. So Shawn Michaels comes out, 59 years old now, dancing his way to the ring to Sexy Boy. They announced new NXT title belts. So new stuff to sell you in a WWE shop. And then they went to Roxanne and Julia. And this is one of those things where I know everyone's waiting for me to just flip my lid and be angry and everything like that. And I will tell you this. I would not have beaten Julia. Okay? I wouldn't have done it. But they did it. With that said, the match itself was great. Like, these two worked great together. And they'd never been in the ring together before. I thought they had a really, really good match. And at the end, a hooded person came out, attacked Julia, gave her a DDT on the floor, Throws her in the ring. Roxanne immediately hits her finish and pins her. So they gave Julia very much an out and a first feud. And they revealed that person was the returning Cora Jade. So if you told me, listen, we've just decided Julia is not winning this match. What do you want to do? I mean, I probably would have come up with this. So it's what they did. Well, I did tell you. 
that I really thought that they could do something like this. And I thought it was with Stephanie Vacker, although they probably had her debut last week. So you would think that a curve was being thrown and just she was doing the attacking and then it's sky blue. I was surprised that they did it, but I thought the match itself now makes you want to see more of those two in the ring with each other. So that's what you wanted to get out of that. It was a sensational debut for Julia. But also, if Roxanne Perez isn't going to the main roster, her as your champion to start on, on CW, I think it's a great idea. Now, I will say that, well, so far so good. Because up and down this show, we had graphics. And not only did we have graphics... But we had people identifying other people by name. I shed a tear. I could have used a graphic there every, for Jade, not Sky Blue. Everything. Everything I could have asked for. Same thing. Was Jade a fire on the show? Everything I could have asked for on this show, <laughs> they did. They identified yes. people. They put graphics up on the screen. Now my fear is that they're going to go, well... Now everyone knows who everybody is, so let's quit. We don't need it anymore. I'm praying they don't do that, but I was delighted. Do you hear me? I was delighted by this program. If they decide not to do it anymore, I hope it's a locker room full of blondes, just because then you'll know it's truly a rib on you. God, they even they even identified Lola Vice. Like, she had a graphic up on the screen. I was just astonished. Then we had Zach Wentz and Wesley... And, God. well, here's the thing with this match. They actually did everything that I wanted them to do as compared to the last time. Because the last time they had this blood feud and they broke up and everything. And then they go in and they're, like, doing flips and lockups and high spots. I'm like, what? That's not what you need out of this match. You guys are supposed to be in a fight. Well, this was a fight. And, and, if you watch the first time they wrestled, okay? I've said this before. If you want to know what I'm talking about, Go watch a Drew McIntyre Sheamus match. When you're in the ring with a best friend, like you beat the crap out of each other. That's just what happens in wrestling. And these guys are like great friends, but I watched their first match and it was like it was like they were both wrestling an egg. They were trying not to touch the other person, not to hurt him or whatever. Well man, that wasn't this match. They were killing each other. And Zach Wentz gave this guy some chair shots to the back. It's like this guy owed him money. I mean, he hit him so hard with these chairs to the back. And they were pummeling each other In and just elbow. <laughs> killing each other. Yeah. And then finally, there was a chain-assisted Meteora for the pin. I mean, for what this was, it was great. But didn't even say anything about Wentz overshooting his dive and landing. He almost killed himself him. there, oh yeah. Oh, my God. There were a couple of those outside the ring. I mean, those guys, they went all out. That's for sure. And then we had Miz TV with Tony D and Obafemi, which was, it was whatever it was. Yeah. But I will say that so Obafemi, man, he's going to be a big, big star because he's got great presence. He's already working, like, more than you'd need for the main roster in a position like he's going to have. And he can talk. Yeah. Like, he out-talked Tony D here. So this was good. And we had Lola Vice and Jada Parker versus JC and Fallon. Yes. And here's the thing with this match, okay? This was, I mean, the funny thing is, like, jc has been around for a long time, and Fallon has as well. They were on the indies. Jada and Lola are new. But the thing is, this was a developmental match because they, like, had a good idea for the story, but in execution, it just didn't work at all. It's like, Jada and Lola are supposed to be having issues where, like, you know, Lola tries to make a save, but Jada thinks she tried to hit her and whatever. And then Jada gets knocked off the apron and she's supposed to think it's Lola, but it wasn't. And then she walks out like these were the ideas they had, but the execution, it was it didn't work. It, it looked too, like an indie match. Too much. Yes. No, it looked like developmental people that were not ready for prime time. And that's exactly what it was. And there's nothing wrong with that. But you're going to, to me, have to limit that more, I would assume, on the CW. I would rather see more pre tape packages and things like that as opposed to live screw-ups because you have people that are just starting out in developmental they are going to be on national TV. So then afterwards, the heels go after Kalani, three-on-one. Bianca and Jade make the save. And so we have a six-person next week. 
Kalani Jordan, Bianca Belair, and Jade Cargill against JC, Fallon, and Jasmine Nix. With a lot of whys. Yeah. And then the main event was Ethan Page, Trick Williams for the title. And, you know, like I said, I mean, the match was fine, but it was it was obviously rushed. And they're just going a thousand miles an hour to try to get everything in. And, you know, Punk is there to be the referee and be all over TV, which is what they wanted. I'm not blaming CM Punk. It's what they told him to do. But this didn't feel like the big celebration of Trick Williams winning the NXT title back that he basically never lost. But, I mean, the match was fine. And uh, then it was rushed off the air. I would say, I would say, I found this to be the best NXT show in months and months and months. And I am praying it stays like this. Because on this night, it was my favorite show again. We'll see. I wonder how this uh, Dynamite's going to be tonight. Maybe we'll have to do a, uh, you know, the Brian and Vinny. What show was better? Maybe not. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hey, listen, I got a ton of news here in the last two minutes. But very quickly, if you enjoyed this free show, subscribe today, WrestlingObserver.com, F4WOnline.com slash YouTube, F4WOnline.com slash Spotify, F4WOnline.com slash Apple. Apple, Podcast, Spotify, and YouTube, all $9.99 a month. And I went up and checked. We did 21 shows. Last week alone, 21 shows. That's 84 shows a month for $9.99 on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. So what check is those the out. News? What well, is it? Would you shut up for a second? I'm plugging. So anyway, head up and check it out, everybody. Or WrestlingObserver.com as well for podcasts and newsletters. So first off, NXT last night on the CW, 895,000 viewers <laughs> and a point two six. Jesus. Which is an excellent number. 895,000 and a .26. So, obviously it's the first day. You advertise CM Punk and everything there. But uh, this show's show's going to do well on CW. This is by far their most watched show. By probably triple whatever else is on CW. So, uh, there you go. I was going to say, let's keep it Also, Good. Tony Khan just announced, Tonight, to celebrate five years of Dynamite... TBS has given us our biggest overrun ever for tonight's action. <laughs> Could be a half hour or more. Now they're ribbing all of us. Oh, a half hour or more? That's not the only announcement today. I can't wait to celebrate with all of you on TBS oh tonight. Oh, my. A half hour or more overrun minutes. for Dynamite tonight. And they only and have four seconds. matches announced, everybody. So we're going an hour. 90-minute draw. I'm thinking Britt Baker might be going an hour, too, with Serena Deeb. Two hours. The Anderson brothers are back. All right. We're out of here, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.